Hello everyone, this is LW Gaming and welcome back for another video of Sword Con Valeria and the Steam pop-up just kind of distracted me for a bit, but anyways here I am again for the news on the Sword Con Valeria event, so first off let's talk about a few things, so first things first uh, we got the return event of Voyage, Voyager's Condendrum so that means the uh, time to get the guild to, to work of course So as you can see here, we have a week to complete all these. Once you complete all these, you will get yourself a hefty amount of re rewards, which is pretty nice. Uh, we also got the treasure surge going on. So you might be thinking, what is this? Well, <clears throat> well, in case you guys didn't know, uh, their event, there's an event going on within the level up training and rank up trials. Uh, so what happened now is that both those stages, like both those like categories, they, they now have 100 uh, uh, extra rewards attempts. Like what the heck? That's a lot of stuff in there. So that is a good opportunity for you to level up your Voyager level if you are kind of behind. I myself does benefit from this because for one, uh, getting, getting your character to level 60 isn't that easy because it does cost you a lot of resources. So this event is going to help you out rank up your characters. Which is pretty nice. And finally, let's talk about the uh, the fireside chat. This is the uh, a new event that just came out here, came out today, and this will be here for eighteen days. <coughs> so let's see what this is about. Of course, we'll take a look at it later. So let's see. Even quests are clear based on the challenge topic selected and the difficulty on the, of the mission. Okay, so they're just the rules, okay. Hmm. I think for, for now, for me, I'll just do 45. And it's another one of those events, huh? That, that we're need, gonna need to do ourselves, huh? And you can change it whenever you want. Interesting. Anyways, we'll, we'll tackle this in another video. I kind of think in it just like the other event, like the Voyage of that of Discovery. Uh, this is also RNG staged, so that means that that even though I did publish the video, it doesn't mean it's gonna match with your gameplay. So yeah, that's the one thing I I've been holding back on. Like you know, like those events they're pretty easy to do, but now they're like completely random for everyone, which means that my guides might not be able to help you in some ways, but it does give you an idea of how it works. So. That's that's one thing to look at. So anyways, you might be thinking, isn't this a bit nuts that they decided to put an event where you get extra rewards of like 100 per day? Like honestly, that is great, but the thing is, it does gonna take take a lot of time, a lot of your time to get all those uh extra re rewards collected. So you can imagine this is gonna be a grind. <clears throat> Let's see what else do we have here. And also speaking of which, my account level has finally reached level 60, which is the max level for time being. Uh, until then, they, they might re re introduce more uh, levels, but for now, level 60 is the max one I can go. There's also something going on in the... Oh yeah, there's also new chapter has been uh, has been unlocked. I think this one is... Yep, this is chapter 11. So we got a new chapter in this update, which is pretty nice. So, and there's also an event quest to, to accompany with this. Pretty nice rewards. As you can see here, there's like some octopus we can grab. For our, uh, you know, the sweep needs. You know the deal. And also the event reminder. I n usually don't do this, but I mean like in the crossing worlds, the event reminder uh, this ban uh, this event, Traders from the Desert event, is going to be leaving uh, very soon. So if you haven't completed most of the stuff already, I recommend you all to do it now. Because once this is done, you won't be able to get those again. Just a bit of a reminder. So anyways, moving on to the, to the banners, because there's also, I think a new, yeah, there's, a, there's a new Destined banner right here. Uh, this one features the two, uh, the Hangman's, uh, siblings. Uh, Nurgle is one of them, and Nungal 
as the other. So even though yeah, I do I already own Nurgle, so yeah, I won't be I won't need to summon here, but there's one character I do need to get here, which is a uh, Nungo, but at the same time I also need Safia, but <clears throat> hmm, yeah, this is really tough. Having both the good banners on here together is uh kinda kinda something that, that we need to really really consider. So anyways, Nurgle, he is a def he's a t tank or known as defender. Uh <clears throat> anyways, he has an interesting kit in here. So he he is a tank as what well. he's a tank like mo most of like he's a unique tank as far as I've heard. Like he has the ability to like swap position with your allies and then he enter his uh protective mode which will make him as a tank which will guard. Interesting. Let's talk about what his uh, trait does. So Lux like Gauntlet, Nurgle really, uh, possesses block. At the end of the turn, he gains powerful shield charge up to two stacks. After performing a block, he gains a bayonet charge up to two stacks. And uh, the first block of each turn decreases the cooldown of all skills by one. So the, like, the, the more he blocks, the more, cool, the more uh, cooldown reduced. Pretty nice. I never knew about that until I read it. <laughs> and uh, this is his normal skill, uh, qu Close Quarter Release. And it's a physical damage, single target attack. Uh, Nurgle deals 110% damage and knocks the target back by 4 tiles. Then, he deals 50% AoE damage to all enemies within a 3x3 area in the target direction and inflicts speed 1 down for 1 turn. So let's see what this speed went down is. Uh, decrease the speed by fifty percent. Okay, that's actually pretty, pretty significant. Especially like since this game is like the the turn order is based on speed. With the speed, but with the speed debuff down on there, <coughs> onto the enemy, you could expect your opponents is not gonna be able to have their turn already, because their their turn got order got delayed by this, which is pretty uh dirty. And then there's also a charge bayonet. Uh, this is a passive skill. At the start of the turn, if the character is not within the enemy's threat range, gains bayonet charge. When bayonet charge is active and the character lands a single target attack on the enemies with the hangman's mark, increase damage by 30% and gains 30% life steal. Ooh, pretty good. So bayonet charge increases attack by 10%. Would the effect double against targets with the hangman's mark? Actively attacking removes all stacks. Hmm. Makes sense, I guess. And this is the one, uh, is it? Let's see what this is. So this is a mark uh, elimination. This is the one that is an instant skill, which will which allows you to act again after using, which is oh, which is pretty nice. Uh, Nurgle inflicts the hangman's mark, attack two down, and vulnerable two on all enemies in the straight line of five tiles in the target direction. The effect lasts for two turns. So as you can see, this this skill is pretty uh pretty strong. I mean, not really strong in the sense of like you know damage wise, but it's strong on like inflicting debuffs. Like, not only like it makes them like have their attacks lowered, it also makes them take more damage in a, in return, and as well as them marked with the hangman's mark. Yeah, getting the hangman's mark is uh, <clears throat> is it's like. It's like getting hit by a, like getting hit really hard than normally would. So as you can see, these are the attributes that you get here. Like the Hemin's mark is like is a state. Being attacked by a certain skill will will cause the character to receive additional effects from the attack. Ooh man, that's pretty na nasty. And then attack two down is decreased physical attack and magic attack by twenty percent. So this one applies to both, both physical and magic. So. So yeah, this debuff is pretty nasty. And also, the Vulnerable 2 is the one that you would take more damage by 20%. Yeah, you do not want to you do not wanna, uh, get yourself in that situation. And there's also Fast Cover, which is another instant skill that he has. And I personally did use this back in the day. Uh, it's an instant skill. Nurgle swaps position with a target ally, granting both of them physical shield. With a value equal to 50% of his physical attack, 
Nurgle takes physical attacks for all allies within a one tile radius. All effects last for two turns. So yeah, after using this this thing, he will uh, be able to move again as well as getting himself a guard, which will protect everyone within like a one tile radius. <clears throat> I mean, at default already. Oh, maybe. Actually, wait, not 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 really. But anyways, you get the idea. So. He enters his protective mode, which will enables him to guard all physical attacks. Sadly, no, not magical attacks because his tank, his tank job is of course protect him from physical harm. So that's a that's a pretty nice, pretty nice for him. And finally, we have critical moment. Uh, is a reaction skill. When a character is dying, dodge all single target attacks for one turn. At the start of the turn, recovers 50% HP, and the cooldown is 7 turns, which is a long time, which, of course, to make it balanced. <clears throat> so, like, if Nurgle is about to die, he would not die so easily with this. Okay, so that's Nurgle for you, and then this is what he looks like initially. <laughs> Pretty nice. And then this is what he looks like in, as his uh, 5 stars. With a Nurg with a Nungo at the background, and speaking of Nungo, she's also on this banner, along with uh, Nurgle in the background as well. So let's see what she does. I've been I did use her back uh, when I was on my alt account, but I never have her on this account. So I want to give you a brief brief uh, moment of how how she works. So, anyways, before we do that, uh, let me explain what Nurgle's uh, actions are. So he's part of Iria. And uh, al al alacrity, <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure they both share the same factions, as far as I've I've noticed. Yep, and yeah, and Nungo is also on those two as well, like Iria and uh, alacrity. <clears throat> the trait, uh, Luxite Crossbow. Changes Nurgle's physical attacks dealt into magic damage, increases crit by 15%. For each one tile between uh, her and the target, distance for adjacent tile counts as zero. Damage increased by 5%, up to 45%. If Nungo does not move before attacking, increases the maximum range by one tile. When attacking enemies outside of five tiles, she ignores the target's reaction skill, preempt, and strike back. Wow, pretty nice. So yeah, Nungo ig completely ignores those things. Oof, pretty pretty nice here. And also, uh, her her base attack is not really physical because it's a uh, it's basically considered magic. So you, you still need to build her as a physical unit, but in return, she is a magic unit with a crossbow on there. Interesting choice. We've been seeing something like that in Languister as well, like <clears throat> something like that, but. I, I think at least one, one character that does that in Languister, which is, I believe, Azusa, or... No, no, it, I know... Actually, wait, there's actually another character. Uh, Clotaire is another. That uses, like, different kind of stats, depending on which ones. I think, like, Clotaire is a special case, because he does use, like, um, like both physical and magic at the same time. While Azusa does kind of do both, but... We'll, we'll see. I, I think I think it does both depending on what kind of what kind of skill you use. I think that's what it does. <clears throat> Anyways, moving on. Let's get back on topic here because this is Sword Convalaria, not Languister. Anyways, marking bullet. And uh, this is a basic attack. Single target attacks, and it's a Nurgle, and also Nungo deals eighty five percent physical damage and inflicts move down one, and the Hangman's mark for two turns. So yeah, with this one, basically it reduces their mobility, which is uh, pretty nasty. And it's a debuff control disruption, which is, uh, oh my. And also Heyman's mark as well. I mean, which makes sense to, since she is in the same team as Nurgle. And it's a sniping stance. This is the one that is like, um, that's the one that, that's like in her signature move. So basically she's a sniper in, in the battlefield. So when you activate this, you, your your Nungo becomes a stationed uh, turret, and Nungo gains sniping stance, and her skill switches to moving stance. <coughs> so after you enter your so sniping stance, you you're going to not be able to move, 
But in exchange, you do get longer range of attack, which is pretty nice. So let's see, the sniping stand increased maximum range of of ranged skills by two tiles, increased attack and crit by 15%. Unable to move, this effect cannot be immune or dispelled. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. And this kind of stuff reminds me of Savaria from like from a course languager, but she is a collab character, by the way, if you're wondering why Savaria is a languager. Anyways, uh, and also, once you use this snipe, sniping stance skill, it becomes moving skill, which will enable her to move, uh, move again. But this also cha reverts the changes when you enter the snipe stance, which uh, makes sense, to be fair. If this game will let me like clear that out, that is. Okay, there it goes. Uh, sense of purpose, a passive skill. When attacking enemies who have the hangman's mark, increase crit by 30% and crit damage by 30%. Additionally, recovers 1 RG when landing a crit hit. Oh, pretty nasty. So, so yeah, if you manage to do a crit on, on in any scenario, uh, this will this will enable her to recover 1 NRG, which is pretty nice. And this one is the ultimate move, deadly aim, single target attack. Uh, Nungo prepares for one turn and then deals 160% damage to the enemy, which ignores block. And also when attacking enemies with the hangman's mark, increase crit by 60%. The hangman's mark is cleared after landing a critical hit. Yeah, pretty deadly if you think about it. So, I mean, what makes it even deadlier is that it's the other skill I'm going to talk about very soon, which is quick reload and it's an instant skill. Uh, Nungo recovers 3 NRG and reduces skill by 1 turn for 3 turns. Deadly Aim does not need to prepare for 1 turn. So that right there is huge. So yeah, basically if you activate this skill, the next time you use Deadly Aim, you don't need to prepare, you just shoot. Just shoot at all. <laughs> just shoot instantly. <clears throat> yeah, that, that, that makes her really, really deadly. So if you have both those skills like uh, like quick reload and deadly aim, you're guaranteed to one shot someone immediately. Like, this is no joke. Absolutely no joke. Like, it, even if you manage to pull this off, I think it's super easy to do because it costs like only four those NRG while quick reload does not cost you anything. Yeah, you eventually get all that in one turn. Yeah, pretty nasty for Nungo. So, yeah, I believe this this character is actually pretty nice to grab. But Safia is the one I do need to get the most here. So we're going to try to get her here, but if I still couldn't get her, whatever, that's fine. I mean, I'm kind of close to somewhat of a pity, but I don't know. Wait, let's, let's see. That's gonna, I'm going to try to pull for her. Uh, I gotta check to make sure I'm using I'm, I'm on the correct number here. So right now I'm sitting at 119. So yeah, actually that's pretty. That's pr quite about right. So, anyways, we're gonna try to summon here. Okay, let's see. Ah, unlikely. Well, that was a uh, that was unfortunate. Yeah, getting someone on banner on here is not as easy as Destin banner. That's for sure. And let's see what's in the store we have this time around. Okay, memory shards, okay. Yeah. Nothing important. I just gotta keep stacking these, and then eventually I'll get my hands on this, which will allow me to obtain a legendary character of my choice. And this will include uh, all the ones in the past. This does not include the ones that has already appeared as debuts. Which uh, makes sense, I guess. <clears throat> so anyways, uh, that's about it from me. So hope you all find this video helpful. And I'll see you all next time. Hopefully very soon I'm going to get my hand, get my hands on the Forge Journey again. For, for the third time on the current chapter. So I can get a, cat, get a catch up to do.